Hi, my name's Russell Norman and welcome to Blue Marvel Storytellers, bringing you great stories from around the globe. On this episode, we bring you a fantastic fairy tale written and read by Heather McQuaid called Spinner of Golden Tales. We talked to Heather on episode 10 of Read Lots, Write Lots. Please enjoy. Edna sputters to the surface, blindly thrashing her legs and arms. The pinky toads leap from their lily pads, diving underwater, watching in wide-eyed wonder at the strange creature flailing in their pond. At last, Edna opens her eyes. The pond is ringed by trees, but not the kind of trees she knows. The silvery bark sparkles in the sunshine, and the purple leaves whistle in the breeze as she swims awkwardly towards shore, finally standing when her feet hit the muddy bottom. Two grayish-green trolls, out for their afternoon stroll, gop with open mouths, their sharp teeth glinting. What sort of creature is that? Bororor asks his wife. I think it may be a human child, Claire Dare replies. But humans can't cross over to this realm. It did. It's here. Ah! Edna screams on seeing the trolls. Ah! The trolls reply in greeting. Am I dreaming? You can't be real. Pinch yourself and see, says Claridere. Ouch! What's your name, human child? E- Edna, where am I? Who are you? What's going on? I am Claridere, Clara says, then points to her husband. And this is Boroar. You're in the queendom of fair folk. As for how you got here, or why, we don't know. The last thing I remember, I was walking in the forest, Edna says, wringing some water from her long dark hair. I'd fought with my mom and kind of stormed off into the woods. I saw a beautiful blue butterfly and followed it deeper into the forest. And then I got really sleepy, so I slept on a bed of pine needles. And when I wake up, I'm nearly drowning in that pond. You must be here for a reason, and we must find that reason. Otherwise, the queen will have your eyes, says Bororor. My eyes? What for? Human eyes, emerald eyes, such as yours, would be a treasure beyond measure, Bororor says, as Clara Dare nods in agreement. How do I find the reason why I'm here? First, we must determine what useful skills you have, Clara Dare asks. Skills? I'm eleven. I don't have skills like grown-ups do. Can you spin flax into gold, Boror offers? What's flax? Can you play the lyre or harp or... Clara Dare asks. No, I don't even sing very well. The trolls frown. That's too bad. We're looking for a singer for our jazz band, Boror says. A raven lands on a nearby log. Good afternoon, Poe, say the trolls. Poe nods and pronounces. Caw! The queen approaches on the road to gather pinky and murky toads. The green-eyed girl from humankind, if she dallies, she'll soon be blind. Caw! If we stay here, Queen Thalia will find her and pluck out her pretty eyes, Claire Dare says. If we take her home and the queen finds out, she'll make a crown from our teeth, says Bororor. Then we can't let the queen find out, Claire Dare says, beckoning Agna to follow them into the forest. After an hour, they reach a small hut with a thatched roof. Boror stokes the fire on the hearth as Clairdare pours hearty broth into bowls and sets them on the rough wooden table. You can have Bagga's room, says Clairdare. That's our son. He's a drummer, on tour with the Tubadors until winter. I uh, thank you, Edna says, sipping the broth. You said everyone must have a reason to be here? What's yours? Well. We used to collect tolls at the bridge, says Bororor, but we weren't making enough gold for sufficient tribute to the queen. So we started playing music, and now fair folk travel far and wide to hear us play. So every creature has a job, and they have to give their money to the queen? We must pay tribute, yes. From the murk toads to the night veils, from the pinky toads to the muse ravens, from the bridge trolls to the shadow gales, each and every inhabitant of Fair Folk Queendom must contribute, Boror says. If they don't, he continues, the queen extracts the things that make each creature beautiful and unique. 
she scraped the shimmering scales from the pinky toads and bottled the deep brown eyes of the murk toads. She snipped the gossamer wings of the night veils, Claridere adds, stolen sorrowful songs from the shadow gales. And, she says, glancing at Poe, who's perched on the windowsill, ripped the rhymes from the muse ravens. That's terrible. Why don't the fair folk refuse to do what she says, Edna asks. She's too powerful. Her magic only grows stronger, and she can pay for a large army to protect her, Bororor says. There must be something the creatures could do, Edna says, trying to stifle a yawn. You've had a long day, child. Why don't you rest now, Claridera says, leading her to a cozy bedroom. Edna falls into a deep, yet restless sleep. Black wraiths chase her through the forest. She stumbles and falls in the dark, gets back up, and falls again. The wraiths get closer and closer until they encircle her. An elvish queen approaches. She's beautiful in a cruel way, like a diamond. All edges and angles, her pale face reflecting in a never-ending hall of mirrors. The queen brandishes a silver spoon, the edge razor sharp as she glides towards Edna. I'll have your emerald eyes, little one, she hisses. So pretty, I'll scoop them with my silver spoon and make some lovely earrings. The wraiths hold Edna down as the queen nears. Cold edge of the spoon slices into... No! Edna screams, waking in the unfamiliar room, covered in sweat and breathing fast. Claridair bursts through the door, a small candle in her hand. She sets it on the side table and sits on the edge of the bed. What's wrong? I, um, I had a bad dream, I guess. The queen was chasing me and... And what? I miss my mom. I'm sure she's missing you too terribly. We'll find a way to get you back. In the morning, as they sit round the table drinking a woody scented tea, Boror says, We don't have much time. The Queen has spies everywhere. If she doesn't already know about you, she soon will. She knows about her, Claire Dare says. The Queen chased Edna in her dream just last night. Boror and Claire Dare exchange worried looks. So, we must find your talent today, Poor Roar says. I, I'm not talented in any way, says Edna, staring into her mug of tea. I'm ordinary. Maybe less than ordinary, that's a thing. Everyone has some talent, Poor Roar says. Sometimes it takes a while to discover it, but you already have it. We just have to find it. What have people told you that you're good at? Claire Dare asks. Uh. I'm good at daydreaming? And sloppy handwriting, Edna says, according to my teachers. Um, I'm good at not listening and being willful and stubborn, according to my mom. Hmm, not sure how we can make those into something people would pay for, Claridere says. There must be something else you excel at. Think hard. Someone must have praised you for something? My grandma says I've got an active imagination, the way I make up stories from thin air. Does that count? Yes, yes. You could spin fantastic stories. Okay, I think I remember some fairy tales, like Hansel and Gretel. What are fairy tales, asked Boar Roar. They're um, stories about magical lands and creatures, and people getting into trouble and then finding a way to get out of trouble, and then living happily ever after? Sounds like nonsense to me, but it might work, he says. But you'll need to tell the queen a tale that really impresses her. What does she like? Gold. And more gold. And ways to get more gold. Okay. So she's greedy. I know plenty of stories about that, Edna says. If the queen likes my story, will she return me to my mom? The queen has the power to do so, Claridere says. But if she thinks she can spin gold from your stories, then there's not much motivation for her to let you go. Their conversation is interrupted by Poe, who lands on the windowsill and says, Caw! The queen pursues, arriving soon, with her ogres and sharpened spoon. Spin your tails to earn the gold, 
or lose your eyes and here grow old. Ah. The queen arrives in a gold carriage bedecked with jewels and pulled by seven strong, sweaty ogres. Her silver skin shimmers in the sunlight. Atop her fine platinum hair sits a golden crown, embedded with the sharp teeth of trolls and the sorrowful eyes of murktoads. Boror and Claridere shiver despite the warm sunshine. Trolls, she says. Are you hiding a treasure here? You know the punishment for that. No, your highness. We are keeping the humans safe so that you may hear her wondrous stories, Boror says, bowing deeply. Stories, you say? They better be worth their weight in gold or I'll have those emerald eyes for my crown. Oh, it's a doozy of a story, Aidna says, swallowing hard. Chair, the queen shouts. One ogre gets down on all fours, while a second covers him in a plush carpet. Backrest, she says. The second ogre, ogre drapes a carpet over his head and stands next to the first. The queen sits on one ogre, leaning her back against the other. You may begin your story, the queen says. No, wait, ogre. Bring me my silver eye plucker. A third ogre retrieves the silver spoon from the carriage and gives it to her. The queen nods towards Edna. Edna begins. Um, once upon a time, in the land of humans, there was an ugly duckling. The duckling was so ugly that its parents could not bear to look upon it. Boring, the queen says, yawning. Edna looks at the trolls, who nod encouragingly. But one day, the duckling happened upon a witch in the woods, Edna continues. And the witch took pity on the duckling and granted him a single wish. The duckling thought for a long time about what he should wish for. Finally, he said, I wish to be wanted by everyone. And um, Edna trails off for a second as the queen sharpens the spoon against the fourth ogre's teeth. Then, then the witch waved her bony hands and chanted something, and whoosh! The duck turned into something beautiful. He became a goose, a, a girl goose, who could lay eggs. But not just any eggs. This goose could lay golden eggs. The queen leans towards Edna, her pointed ears twitching. And people came from far and wide to see the goose who lays the golden eggs. And the goose was very popular. All the cute boy gooses, uh, geese asked her to dance. And the other girl geese were very jealous. Where is this golden goose now? You must take it to me at once, the queen says, standing and striding towards Edna. Uh, well, the, the golden goose, it's, um, it's a story? An amazing true story, Claridere interrupts, staring meaningfully at Edna. Uh, yeah, sure, a true story. And the goose is my friend. We hang out sometimes because she likes to hear my stories. And she gives me eggs. So I have like loads of eggs in my room. And my mom was like, Edna, you have too many eggs. And I'm like, chill, mom. I just, you will show me this goose, the queen says. Yeah, uh, but it's back in uh, my land with the humans, so... Queen removes her crown, holding it in front of her like a large ring resting on its side. Put your hand into the crown ring, she commands. Edna slowly puts her left hand into it, expecting to see it poke out the other side. But instead, it disappears into the ring. The queen adds her hand and says something in Elvish. Just before they swirl into the crown ring, Poe joins them. Edna lies on a pine of pine needles, staring up at a cloudless blue sky. Beside her is a mouse with silver fur and pointed ears, and Poe perched on the crown. Ka! At once the queen becomes a mouse. The magic's gone as is her house. Edna with her story prevails, future author of fairy tales. Ka! Poe hops gracefully into the crown and disappears before it disintegrates into a clump of sticks and leaves. The mouse looks at Aidna, ears twitching. A red-tailed hawk circles above, eyeing the rodent with interest. Aidna stands up, brushing pine needles off her clothing. A blue butterfly flits by and she follows it, knowing it will lead her home.
We trust you enjoyed this story and we really appreciate you listening to this podcast and supporting the great writers featured. To further support the writers, we would also like to encourage you to share the links to this podcast far and wide. If you are a writer and you would like to showcase your work or talk to us about your writing on Read Lots, Write Lots, we'd love to hear from you. Please get in touch with us by sending an email to russell at bmpublish.com. If you'd like to stay in touch with what we're doing here at Blue Marble Storytellers and on Read Lots, Write Lots, including upcoming guests, news about great stories and other existing things, please sign up to our newsletter at any of the websites. I would also like to mention we've started a new Discord chat channel to provide a place for writers to meet, chat, laugh, cry and generally have fun in a supportive environment in which to share their love of writing. If you'd like to join our chat, you can find the details on our websites, readlightsrotlots.com and bluemarblestorytellers.com. Well, that's it for this episode. So on behalf of Deidre and myself, until next time, thanks for listening and bye for now.